air. It's all around us, which is really good news because like most living things on the planet, we need air to breathe. That is, we need clean air to breathe. Dirty or polluted air that's chock full of chemicals like nitrogen dioxide and ozone isn't really the sort of stuff we want getting into our lungs, so it's important to try and keep it out of our air, too. Now, nitrogen dioxide is a chemical that can get into the air, usually from human activities, like driving our cars or burning fossil fuels. When it gets into the air and interacts with sunlight, it can create ozone here in the layer of the atmosphere where we need to breathe. Now, that ozone can create something called smog, which makes it really hard for us to breathe. Ozone is something you might have actually heard about before, like the ozone layer, maybe? The ozone layer is a layer of that same chemical ozone up in the upper layers of our atmosphere. It's important that it's up there because we don't breathe it. And so in that layer of the atmosphere, it actually protects us from the harmful rays of the sun. When it comes to the chemistry of our air and what's going to be helpful for us or harmful for us, it all has to do with location and quantity. So when we have a lot of harmful chemicals like nitrogen dioxide and ozone here in this layer of the atmosphere where we need to breathe it, it not only makes it harder for us to breathe, but can actually have really harmful long-term effects on our body as well. Don't believe me? We'll take it from one of our experts, NASA atmospheric scientist, Jim Crawford. Uh, when we talk about air quality, we're really talking about the health of the population as it has to breathe the, the air that we need to live. There are a lot of constituents in the atmosphere that come into play to define air quality, but in terms of regulating air quality, we focus on uh, largely uh, two things. We focus on ozone, uh, which in the stratosphere is a, a great boon to our population as it protects us from the ultraviolet rays. But down here, it's a reactive gas that reacts with human tissue. And so when you breathe high levels of ozone into your lungs, you're essentially uh, reacting tissue with, with the atmosphere. That, that's, that's a respiratory problem. Fine particles is the other problem. And many of these fine particles, uh, we know that particles come out of a tailpipe or out of a smokestack, but the large fraction of particles come from gases that condense into a particle form. Uh, those very fine particles can be breathed into the lungs as well. We need to really understand what people are breathing and how it's affecting their health. Is breathing clean air important to you? Absolutely, especially with um, people's uh, med many, many, many medical backgrounds. It's one of the necessities because oxygen is what gives us life. Why would it be important to know what's in the air? Um, because you, you could get sick. You don't want to get sick. You're also yeah breathing it in and out, so you should want to know what's in the air, what's going into your body. <laughs> it's so important for us to know what's inside of our air. And TEMPO, the joint NASA and Smithsonian satellite instrument, is going to help us do just that. Now, TEMPO stands for Tropospheric Emissions Monitoring of Pollution. And the satellite instrument is going to sit on top of the Intelsat 40E satellite, where it'll be providing hourly data on what's in our air over the entire continent of North America. The satellite instrument uses something called spectroscopy, which basically means that it uses light in order to determine what exactly is in the air. Now, this way of taking in data means that it'll be running during daylight hours. TEMPO will actually be the first satellite instrument that's going to be able to take these hourly daytime measurements at a suburban scale. Now, this detailed view is going to give scientists and researchers a more in-depth perspective of air quality over North America. Now, the TEMPO mission is the result of years of hard work, and it's actually been underway for just over a decade. Let's talk to Kelly Chance from the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. He's been a part of the mission from the very beginning. My name is Kelly Chance. I'm the principal investigator for TEMPO, which is a NASA and Smithsonian space instrument that's going to launch this April, and we will be measuring atmospheric pollution for greater North America from the Atlantic to the Pacific, from Mexico to the tar sands of Canada every hour. Air pollution is our purpose, and, and uh, we are very comprehensive in that, and we will supply wonderful sets of measurements that will allow scientists to learn all kinds of new things about pollution, where it comes from, how it gets transformed, where it goes, uh, and that's what we do. So you might be wondering where all those harmful chemicals that cause pollution are coming from anyway. Well, the answer is lots of different places. What do you think are some of the sources of air pollution? The sources of air pollution, I would say obviously mainly cars and a lot of factories around here. Uh, yeah, cars. Um, yeah. Uh, the pipes in the back, um, these factories, cigarettes, um, cigarettes um, industries. 
If I had to guess, to the best of my knowledge, I would say landfills are one big source. Mm, cars. I know cars, trucks. In some cases, it's from human activities, like when we drive our cars or planes or burn fossil fuels or even burn wood. Sometimes it comes from natural sources too, like wildfires or volcanic eruptions. The satellite instrument Tempo is going to be able to tell us all kinds of stuff about pollution. For instance, what kind is being emitted, when it's being emitted, and where it's actually coming from. All of those details will help us to keep a better eye on our air quality. You can actually check your air quality and see how polluted the air is with something as simple as the weather app on your cell phone. Have you ever heard of the air quality index? No. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I ever heard of that one. Do you know what the air quality index is? Um, it's like a chart or something like that people use to like rate the air quality. So AQI, which is the air quality index, is actually something, do you use your weather app on your phone? Mm -hmm. If you open up your weather app, So if you scroll down, you see this? You see right there? Air quality? Oh. <laughs> oh, I've never noticed that before. What does it say? Moderate. Uh-huh. So that's the that's the air quality. Oh, okay. Yeah. All of that information is made possible by Earth observing satellites just like Tempo, as well as airborne science missions and ground monitors. To tell us how Tempo is going to help our researchers to get a more complete understanding of air quality, let's check back in with our expert, Jim Crawford. So the only way you can truly monitor air quality accurately is from the ground. And so in a major city, you may have a dozen monitors, half dozen monitors, but there's a lot of gaps in those monitors, a lot of people who don't live nearby those monitors. Uh, Tempo's high resolution and continuous observations begin to fill those gaps. They begin to provide a more complete picture, at least of key observables, things that we can see from space, uh, that can be used to understand in a better way uh, what's happening uh, everywhere, not just at those monitoring sites. That information is not only helpful to understand what's happening across the landscape, but it's also important to ask the fundamental question, are the monitors in the right place? Should we reposition them? Can we optimize our view of air quality. Tempo helps us to understand air quality and air pollution, and in doing so, it can actually help us to address one of the major issues facing all of us today, climate change. Now, Earth's climate and how we're affecting it actually has a lot to do with pollution and human health, especially when it comes down to ground level ozone. Now, when sunlight hits the Earth, it can either be reflected off of the Earth back into space or absorbed by the Earth itself. There are certain gases, greenhouse gases, that also like to absorb sunlight and heat. So sometimes when the sunlight hits the earth, it gets absorbed, and then you absorb even more because of those gases. They act like a blanket, keeping earth warm. But when they get out of balance, it can get a little bit too hot. Now in places where it's hotter than usual and the air is stagnant, it's the perfect place for that ground level ozone. Tempo is really helpful in that it can help us understand a little bit better exactly what conditions are making that possible and where that's happening so that we can address those concerns. I'm Ellen Stofan. I am the Undersecretary for Science and Research at the Smithsonian. So the Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics um, with Harvard is, is um, part of my portfolio and I'm the former chief scientist of NASA. When we think about all the ways that climate change is harming human health, we see across the world, due to various human activities, we produce a lot of pollution, nitrogen gases, sulfur gases, ozone that are in our atmosphere. All of these threaten human health. We know that, for example, children who grow up in cities with high levels of air pollution are much more likely to get asthma. Well, it turns out the effects of climate change also heighten people's susceptibility to asthma. The most important thing we can do as scientists is we need data, we need to be able to measure, and as we have mitigations, as we pollute less, we want to be able to measure that to show that some of our solutions that we're coming with, up with are actually working. I look out across the solar system, and as we start learning more about these planets around other stars, you know, there's only one planet we have found where humans can live, where humans can thrive. There really is no place like home. And so to me, when you look at the fragility of our planet, that beautiful view that the astronauts from the International Space Station get every day, you see this big blue marble with this very thin layer of atmosphere above it. 
it's incredibly important for us to think about how we treat our planet as though it were a spaceship, as though it were the International Space Station. How do we make sure we have clean water? How do we make sure we have clean air? And how do we make sure everything on this planet thrives? And in order to do that, we have to solve climate change. And scientific data like that we're going to get from Tempo is part of the solution. Tempo has the capability to help us address major concerns like pollution, air quality, and even climate change. All of that giving us Earthlings a new tool in our toolbox as far as Earth observing satellites go. Now let's hear from Director of Earth Science at NASA, Karen St. Germain, for more ways that Tempo is going to help us and Earth have a brighter future. NASA has over 50 years of Earth science and climate data in our archives. And as more and more federal agencies are incorporating climate resilience, adaption, and response into their operations, NASA's Earth science data is powering their programs, not just NOAA and EPA, but also the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Interior, FEMA, the Forest Service, and more. To make our data and information more open and accessible to the broader public, NASA is developing the Earth Information Center. It's a physical and online hub of Earth information, of environmental information. So TEMPO observations will feed directly into the Earth Information Center. So the government agencies already look to NASA to Earth science to help operational services like air quality modeling, public health alerts, and weather analysis and forecasting. But we want to make our Earth science available to the public as well and have a much broader impact. So as the first funded Earth Venture instrument in our Earth Venture program, the Tempo mission is a prime example of NASA's Earth Action Strategy. So here's how it works. We start developing innovative technologies. These new technologies give us more and better and more accurate uh, ways to view the Earth and to measure, uh, in this case, the atmospheric composition. Those better observations give us a better understanding. And better understanding means we can get better at building predictive models that tell us not just what the air quality is now, but what it's likely to be in the future. And those models then allow users of that information, people who have to make decisions, look into the future and make better informed decisions than they could otherwise. So we call this the high value uh, science chain from technology to measurements, to understanding, to being able to actually use our best scientific understanding to inform decisions that people have to make every day. So stay tuned for the launch of Tempo, the satellite instrument that's going to help us take a closer look at the air we breathe and keep that air safe. So can you tell me what you have learned today? I've learned that I knew that air pollution and the air quality was a big issue, but I know I've learned through this interview that it is something that I definitely should inform myself on more to be able to talk about and see if there's any way that I can help make a difference as well. I learned what the air quality index is and that they check uh, air pollution and the quality of the air by going into planes and satellites, which is cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I learned that, um, I learned what the ground level, is, like what's closest to the ground. Um, I learned the word troposphere. I think I said that correctly. Um, and what else did I learn? I learned about the Tempo project. I'm going to go look up more into that so I can keep up to date with it because it's obviously something that's going to be better for us. So I want to stay part of that project and yeah, just learn that I need to be more aware of what's going on and look at my air quality. Mm -hmm.